All right, number one. If the two triangles are similar, what is the value of x and y? Leave your answer in the form of a fraction. Okay, so as discussed in, in class, uh, when you are creating a proportion, the first thing you want to do is think um, big picture. So the big picture is this side right over here. Let's call it the, the left side of the small triangle. We want to compare it to the left side of the big triangle. So let's create our proportion. One half over three fourths should equal, and then the right side of the small triangle to the right side of the big triangle. So that should be uh, proportional. All right, so that's uh, five fourths over, and then we don't know that's going to be x. Now, I know that looks scary, but really this is just simple fractions, um, or just dealing with simple fractions. We know how to cross multiply, right? We multiply 3 fourths by 5 fourths, and then we divide that uh, answer, that product, by 1 half. That's simple. So 3 fourths, let's just jot that down, 3 fourths times 5 fourths equals, well, that's 15 over 16. That's easy. And then we're going to take that answer and we're going to divide it by, divide it by one half. Isn't that fun? Now we know that um, there is such thing as a division when you're using fractions, but every division problem is really a multiplication problem in disguise. So 15 over 16 divided by one half is just 15 over 16 uh, times 2 over 1. And that's simple, that's 30 over 16. And we want to um, uh, simplify that. So 30 over 16, we can simplify to, uh, let's divide it by two, uh, 15 over eight. And I think uh, divide by three, divide by five, can't really simplify that anymore. Uh, so you can leave your answer in the form of a fraction. So the answer here is 15 over eight, 15 over eight. And depending on, um, you know, most of your, uh, you know, every question on the MSA or most uh, questions uh, are multiple choice. So you also should know that 15 over 8 is 1 and 7 eighths. So both of these, uh, sometimes it's appropriate to leave your answer as an improper fraction. Sometimes it's more appropriate to leave it as a, um, or to convert it to a mixed number. Um, either, either answer is correct. And now you have a simple way uh, or you know the procedure for for finding y. Uh, y should be equal to, let's see, the left side of the small triangle, one half, over the left side of the big triangle, three fourths, should equal um, the bottom side or the base of the small triangle, three halves, over the base of the big triangle, y. So now we've got a very similar problem. Uh, 3 fourths times 3 halves divided by 1 half. I should really have times divided by. So let's do it. 3 fourths times 3 halves is just 9 over 8. And then 9 over 8, div I'm going to skip a step here because you should know this by now. Divided by 1 half is multiplied by 2 over 1. And that gives you... Uh, 18 over 8. And we divide that by 2, and that's just 9 over 4. So, 9, y equals 9 over 4, or 1 and, I'm sorry, that's not 1, 2 and 1 fourths. And there we are. Number two, Draco wants to make cookies for his entire math class, including the teacher. The recipe calls for a fourth, a one fourth a cup of sugar for a batch of 30 cookies. Right there, a fourth a cup of sugar for a batch of 30 cookies. As soon as you see that, you should probably jot that down. If it's not, if it's not on paper, it's in your mind. A fourth a cup of sugar 
sugar um, for 30 cookies. For 30 cookies. All right, if there are 25 students and one teacher in his class and he wants each person to have at least two cookies, then how much sugar will he need? Okay, now let's think about big picture here. We are comparing sugar to cookies, all right? Sugar in the recipe, uh, in recipe, to cookies in recipe, remember this is just the big picture, should equal um, uh, sugar needed to the cookies needed. Now half of this proportion we already have set up. Um, the sugar in the recipe calls for, uh, or the recipe calls for a fourth a, a cup of sugar for uh, 30 cookies. So we can write that down. A fourth a cup of sugar for 30 cookies. Should equal, now the sugar needed is what we're trying to find out. So we don't know what that is. We'll write a little question mark. You can put an X there, whatever you want. Um, now we want to know how many cookies uh, do we need in total. Now you have to read the problem. It doesn't matter if you know how to solve this problem. If you don't know how to set it up, if you don't start with the right numbers, um, all of your intelligence, all of uh, your hard work uh, goes out the window because you weren't patient enough to read what the question is asking. There are 25 students and one teacher. That means there are 26 people who are going to eat the cookies. And Draco wants each person to have at least two cookies. So that is a total of 52 cookies. So how much sugar is needed to make 52 cookies? Well, this is simple. 52 times 1 fourth divided by, and then divided by 30, gives you your answer. So 52 over 1 uh, times 1 fourth equals 52 over 4. And then 52 over 4 divided by 30, which is just 30 over 1, is the same as 52 multiplied by, th I'm sorry, by 1 over 30, 1 over 30, which equals 52 over, and uh, 30 times 4 is 120. So that equals, um, let's reduce this, let's divide it by 2, that's 26 over 60. Uh, let's just, uh, uh, 26 over 60 divided by 2 is 13 over 30. So 13 over 30. Let me double check. 52 divided by 120 is 0 0.433333333. And then 13 over 30 is 0 0.433333333. And so there's our answer right there. Um, now, you could write 13 over 30, 13 thirtieth cups. But that doesn't really mean much. You could also write 0.43 bar cups or approximately 4 tenths of a cup of sugar. Um, and actually, you should probably reduce that to 2 fifths. A little more than 2 fifths. So, but if, if in, in the real world, this would mean the most, this would make the most sense. Approximately two-fifths of a cup of sugar. Um, and there we are. So any of this would be correct. And this would probably, if, if you saw any of these answers on a test, you, you should be able to figure out that uh, all of the, any of these are the right answer. Moving on. Number three. Below is a Google Maps result for the shortest distance between Akakik Academy and King's Dominion. The legend at the bottom of the screen indicated that one inch equals 20 miles. Now, if the path on the screen is approximately 4.6 inches long, then how far is it to King's Dominion? Additionally, if a bus transporting students traveled at an average speed of 55 miles per hour, at approximately what time would the students arrive if they left at exactly um, 8 o'clock a.m.? Okay, complex problem. 
uh, or I should say simple problem multi-part. So the first thing we want to notice is the, uh, the scale factor between the map and the real world. All right, so there's map, then there's real world. Uh, I'll just put real. All right, um, so uh, there's, the, and then there is, um, well, that uh, there's, well, let me, let me label this differently. There's the scale of the map, scale of the map to the scale in the real world. And then we want to know um, what do we, um, the measurement on the map to the measurement in the real world. So we know the scale of the map. Um, and if this doesn't make sense to you, you can represent this in a way that is meaningful to you. But the the main idea that we discussed in class was that you set up the big idea first. Don't worry about the numbers. Worry about the relationships. If you get the relationships right, then all you have to do is plug in the, the numbers. So the scale on the map is one inch in the map to um, it equals 20 miles in the real world. Now the measurement on the map, we know we measured uh, the path was 4.6 inches. So we want to know how many miles that is in the real world. So you know how to do this, 4.6 times 20, and then divide it by 1. So that's pretty easy. 4.6 4.6 times 20 is approximately, or exactly, 92 miles. So how far is it to King's Dominion? 92 miles. That answers that question. If a bus transporting students traveled at an average of 55 miles per hour, at approximately what time would the students arrive if they left at exactly um, 8 o'clock a.m.? So we want to know how long does it take uh, a bus traveling 55 miles an hour to travel 92 uh, miles. So that's easy. Uh, now you can do this using division, and I'm sure most of you will, but also know you could use this using um, uh, a proportion, and it gets you the same answer. So we know that you're traveling 55 miles for every one hour. If you need to drive 92 miles, or your speed is 55 miles per hour, if you travel 92 miles, then how many hours have you traveled? Well, you get the same thing. 92 uh, times 1 is just 92, and then we end up dividing it by 55. 92 divided by 55 equals 1.67, and then, ooh, we got a nice 27 bar um, hours. Now, the question asks you for an exact time or an approximate time. If they left at exactly 8 o'clock, uh, at approximately what time would they arrive? Well, they would arrive 1.6727 bar uh, hours later. Well, okay. Well, we know that one hour past 8 o'clock is 9 o'clock. All right, 9 o'clock a.m. And then we need to add that to 0.6727 bar of an hour. Well, how many minutes is that? Again, we can use a proportion. 60 minutes equals one hour. That doesn't look very nice. Um, 60 minutes equals one hour. So how much would uh, 0.6727 hours be? 0.67 Two seven, uh, and we'll just we'll just round it. Uh, I mean, we'll just keep it there. No bar. Uh, 0 0.6727 hours is how many minutes? Again, 0.6727 hours times 60. 0.6727 times 60 equals about 40.362 minutes. That doesn't look very nice. Let me look. Let me write that four a little better. 40.362 uh, minutes. So it's 9 a.m. plus uh, approximately 40 minutes. So the answer there would be, I'll, I'm running out of space. 
let me erase this. Is this going to work? Nope, that's not going to work. Let me erase all this. And so it's uh, 9 o'clock plus approximately 40 minutes. So you'd get there in uh, nine at 9.40 uh, a.m. approximately. All right. Now, that being said, who wants to go to King's Dominion? Tough. You got to finish your homework. All right. Number four. The median family income in 1962 was $6,000, approximately $6,000 per year. As of 2011, the median family income was $50,502 per year. Per year. I should have put per year. If the minimum wage was $1.25 in 1962, what would you have expected it to be in 2011? Um, okay, well, let's set up the big picture. Let's compare uh, the median family income in 1962 to the median family income in 2011. And that should equal the minimum wage in 1962, oops, 1962, compared to the minimum, uh, the minimum wage in 2011. Now, alternatively, you could have thought of this a different way. Uh, some people will tell you this is a more elegant way or a more mathematically correct way. Um, don't listen to them. Proportions are, are a tool that you use, and you can, you can use them however you want as long as you use them correctly. So here you're comparing the price of, um, of the same thing over here, uh, me median income in 1962 to median income in a different time. And we're assuming that that should be uh, the same as the minimum wage in 1962 uh, uh, to the minimum wage in a different time. However, you could compare the different prices, the relative prices in the same year to what they should be in a different year. So what does that mean? Some of you may have set up your proportion like this. Um, the median income in 1962 compared to the minimum wage in 1962. So here we're comparing two different the value of two different things in the same year. And relatively speaking, um, they should be about the same in all the other years. Um, and if they're not, there's I, I mean this doesn't always happen, but we're assuming that they should be. Um, so uh, what am I doing? Uh, median income. So the median income in 2011 uh, compared to the minimum wage in 2011 should be about the same ratio, right? So now that we have our big picture, let's fill in the numbers and see what we get. Now, the reason I set up two proportions is to show you that either way you think of it, you're going to get the same answer. It doesn't matter how you think of it, but you just have to compare, um, you have to set up your proportion correctly. Uh, many of you don't start out with the big picture, and you and you you set up the wrong proportion. And I, I will show you uh, what some of you do. So let's start with this. The median income in 1962 was six thousand dollars. The median income in 2011 was uh, fifty thousand uh, five hundred and two dollars. Now that should equal the minimum wage in 1962 was a dollar twenty five. And uh, uh, what would you have expected it to be in 2011? We don't know. So we want to find that out. And now let's set this up. Medium income in 1962 was $6,000. The minimum wage in 1962 was uh, $1.25. And uh, then uh, the median income in 2011 was 50502 And we want to find out what the minimum wage is in 2011. Now, what if you just saw these numbers and came up with, uh, or you didn't write, you didn't write these values uh, in the right place? You would come up with, with a wrong answer, right? Um, let's say you wrote, uh, I don't know, uh, six thousand up here, six thousand to uh, 
five uh, fifty thousand five hundred and two, and that equals um, something over one twenty five. That's a mistake I could see some of you making. If you set up this proportion, it might look right to you. You've got all the numbers. Um, they seem, you know, you, you've got the 6,000 and the, uh, the 50,502 over on this side and the dollar twenty five over on this side. So you're going to find X or, or unknown. This looks right, but it's not right. And you can clearly see why when you look at the big picture. So please, when you're doing, when you're working with proportions, think of the big picture first. And now let's do our, uh, well, actually, I'm only going to do this once because you can see over here we multiply 50,502 by $1.25 and then we divide it by 6,000. And here you do the same thing. You multiply 50,502 by $1.25 and you divide it by $6,000. So that's exactly what we're going to do. 50,502 times... 1.25 divided by 6,000 gives you an answer of the minimum wage in, um, here, let me erase that. The minimum wage in 19, uh, 2011 should have been approximately $10.50. Uh, technically, $10.52. I'll write that. And there's your answer right there. $10.52. Uh, it was not anywhere near $10.52. Uh, I didn't look it up, but I think it was something along the lines of $7.25, maybe $7.50. I'm not really sure what it is. Recently, uh, the president has asked us to raise it to $9, which still is less than what we'd expect it to be. Number five. One can of Coca-Cola, which holds 7.5 fluid ounces, has approximately 90 calories. If a supersized drink at McDonald's is 42 fluid ounces, how many calories does it contain? Additionally, if the recommended daily allowance of calories for a 13-year-old is approximately 2,200 calories, how much of the daily allowance is taken up by this one drink? So basically, if you drink a supersized cup of, of Coca-Cola at McDonald's, how, how much of of your daily calories have you had? All right, so one can of Coca-Cola, let's think about this big picture. Um, one can, or I should say 7.5 fluid, well, what we're comparing is fluid ounces to calories. All right, um, so we want the fluid ounces of a can, one can, to the calories in a can, to the fluid ounces of a uh, supersized drink, supersize, uh, to the calories in the supersized drink. All right, um, now I have my big picture. I just fill in the values. The fluid ounces in a can, 7.5 ounces, 7.5. Um, calories in a can, 90. Fluid ounces in a supersized drink, 42. How many calories? Don't know, but I'm going to find out. 42 times 90 divided by 7.5 is 504 calories. Now, I've had 504 calories out of 200, uh, 2,200 calories for the rec uh, uh, for the day. Um, how much of the daily allowance is taken up by this one drink? Well, it's 504 over 200, uh, 2,000, uh, 2,200. How much? What would be an appropriate way of um, expressing this value? Probably not a fraction like this, right? You probably want to turn this into a percent. Uh, so you would divide 504 by 2200, uh, and you would get the decimal 0 0.2290 bar. And to turn that into a percent, you just take the decimal place, move it two uh, places to the right, and you get 22.9%, or we're not going to quibble, I'm going to say approximately 23% of your daily 
allowance for calories, that one drink. That means that means if you had five of those drinks, that could that's all you could have the whole day. All right. Moral of the story is don't order a supersize and limit limit your your Coca Cola or your soft drinks. Number six. Uh, a 380 cubic centimeter sample of titanium has a mass of uh, 1,710 grams. Find the mass of a titanium sample that has a volume of 532 cubic centimeters. Write and then solve a proportion to find the answer. Ooh, okay, big picture. All right, we've got um, the volume of, let's say, the sample one to the mass of sample one should be in proportion to the volume of sample two to the mass. Ah, mass of sample two. All right, big picture. Now fill in my numbers. What's the volume of sample one? That's uh, 380 cubic centimeters, cubic centimeters, over um, uh, 1,710 grams. All right, 1,710 grams should equal, find the mass of the titanium, a volume is 532 cubic centimeters, should equal how many grams? Uh, 380, to, oops, no, no, uh, 532 times 1710 divided by 380 equals uh, 2,394 uh, grams. I can see them trying to trip you up on the MSA with units. Would 2,394 centimeters squared or cubic centimeters be the right answer? No, it's grams. All right, number seven. The big town football team outscored its opponents 5-2 to two last season. If their opponents scored 38 points, how many points did big town score? Okay, um, they give you a ratio here, all right? They give you a 5-4 to four ratio. So what we're trying to find is um, big town's, uh, the big town's uh, points uh, to opponent's points, to their opponent's points. Now, we know that the ratio between Big Town's points and opponent's points is 5 to 4, which means for every two points that the opponents uh, scored, Big Town scored 5. Now, we know how many points their opponents scored. We want to find the uh, amount of points that Big Town... Uh, I can't get over that name. It's such a stupid name. Big Town <laughs> scored. So, um, let's just rewrite this. A ratio. Uh, Big Town's points, we don't know. The opponent's points were 38, uh, and that has a ratio of 5 to 2. So 38 times 5 divided by 2. 38 times 5 divided by 2. So that's 95. It's 95 points. And what's the easiest way of figuring out whether or not you got the right answer. It's very simple. If you turn this side into a decimal and you turn that side into a decimal, they should be the same decimal. So 95 divided by 38 gives you um, 2.5. And 5 divided by 2 gives you a look at that, 2.5. You have the right answer. These two um, ratios are in proportion. Okay, number eight. In a certain desert environment, there are a lot of small rodents. There also happen to be a lot of snakes that feed on the rodents. The ratio of rodents to the rodent-eating snakes is 13 to 3. Uh, if there are 4,000 snakes in the area, about how many rodents are there? Let's think big picture. Well, we are, what we're doing is comparing rodents to the rodent-eating, uh, or basically rodents to snakes. Uh, and we know that that ratio is, there's going to be 13 rodents for every three snakes. Um, so, depending on how many snakes there are, there's going to be a, um, that many more rodents. How many snakes do we have? We have 4,000 snakes. So now that we have the big picture, we can rewrite our proportion to find the rodents are, uh, if there are 4,000 snakes and the ratio is 13 to 3, 
um, R equals, or the number of rodents equals what? Uh, so we take 4,000, wow, that's a lot of snakes, uh, 4,000 times 13 divided by 3, uh, ew, gives you a weird number, okay, uh, 17,333.3 bar snakes. And that's your answer right there. Um, on a test, they would probably have you round up to four, or uh, 17,334. But, uh, and I hope you all know why you would round up there. Uh, although, yeah. Yeah, this is a proportion. Yeah, you would uh, probably want to round up to 17,334 because you can't have 0.3 uh, of a bar of a snake.